A strange man he is. Attractive, but strange. Difficult to know, I should think. They say he was quite different before his wife died. <gasps> what a dreadful thing that was. I never saw her, but I believe she was very lovely. Exquisitely turned out and brilliant in every way. They used to give tremendous parties at Mandalay. Oh, it was all very sudden and tragic, and I believe he adored her. Mrs. Van Hocker's suite? Oh, would you hold on a minute, please? It's Mrs. Nicholson Drury. Oh, fine. Let me talk to her. Helen? My dear, how are you? What? When? Is it serious? Oh, thank God for that. When are you going? Helen, listen. We're gonna come with you. No, I insist. Oh, to hell with Europe. Helen, listen, dear. Please listen. I'll make all the arrangements and I'll call you tomorrow around 10, okay? Fine. Now, don't worry, Helen, and keep cheerful and don't worry. Goodbye, dear. Uh -uh. We're going home. Home? Helen's had a cable from New York. Her daughter's got appendicitis and they've cabled her to go home and we're going with her. I'm sick to death of Europe. And we can come back in the early fall. How do you like the idea of seeing New York? I'm not sure. What do you mean you're not sure? I can make you out sometimes. Don't you realize that girls in your position with no money can have the grandest fun in New York? Plenty of boys and excitement. And you won't be at my beck and call as much as you are here. Don't look so miserable for heaven's sake. I thought you didn't care for Monty. I've got used to it. Well, you'll just have to get used to New York. Now go down to the reception desk right away and make that young clerk show some sign of efficiency. Tell him we're leaving Saturday and tell him to get things moving. Hello. What is it? Is there something the matter? I've come to say goodbye. We're leaving tomorrow. Come in. Shut the door. What on earth are you talking about? It's true. We're leaving tomorrow and there's so much to do. I was afraid I shouldn't see you again. Well, I had to see you. I had to thank you. Sit down. Why didn't you tell me this before? Well, she only decided yesterday. It was all done in such a hurry. A friend of hers is going back to New York and we're going with her. We're joining her in Paris and going through to Cherbourg. And she wants to take you with her to New York? Yes. You want to go? No, I shall hate it. I shall be miserable. Then don't go. Oh, I have to, you know Why? that. Why? Well, I work for a salary. I can't afford to leave her. Do you want some breakfast and coffee? No, thank you. So, Mrs. Van Hopper has got tired of Monte Carlo and wants to go home. Well, so do I. She to America, I to Mandalay. Which would you prefer? You have your choice. Oh, please don't joke about it. I'm not joking. I never joke at breakfast time. New York with Mrs. Van Hopper or Mandalay with me? I don't understand. Choose. You mean... Oh, you mean you want a secretary or something? I'm asking you to marry me, you little fool. You can't. Can't I? Why not? You can't mean it. I do. But I don't belong to your world. What is my world? Well, Mandalay, you know what I mean. Surely I'm the best judge of that. Ah, you think I'm asking you on the spur of the moment, don't you? Because you say you don't want to go to New York. You think I'm asking you to marry me for the same reason that I took you for that drive on the first day. To be kind, don't you? Yes. Yes, well, one of these days you'll realize that being kind isn't my strongest quality. You still haven't answered my question. 
Will you marry me? Obviously not. I'm sorry. It's a fine blow to my conceit. I thought you loved me. But I do love you. I love you dreadfully. I've been crying all night because I thought I'd never see you again. Bless you for that. One day, I'll remind you this night. And you won't believe me. Oh, what a shame. What a shame you have to grow up. Well, that's settled. Instead of being Mrs. Van Hopper's companion, you will be mine, and your duties will be very much the same. I, too, like to play bezique after dinner, and someone to pour out my tea. The only difference is that I, I don't take Taxol. I prefer Eno's. And you must never let me run out of my particular brand of toothpaste. <laughs> oh, my poor darling. I'm sure this isn't your idea of a proposal. We should be in a conservatory. Hmm? You in a white dress, with a flower in your hand, and a violin playing a waltz in the distance. And I should make love to you under a palm tree. Hmm? Never mind. I'll take you to Venice for a honeymoon, and I'll hold hands with you in a gondola. But we won't stay long, because I want to show you Mandolin. Who's going to tell Mrs. Van Hopper, you or me? You tell her. She'd be so angry. Does 42 seem very old to you? Oh, no, I don't like young men. <laughs> Do you mind how soon you marry me? How soon? Well, the whole thing could be arranged in a few days, over a desk with a license. You don't want a trousseau, do you, or any of that nonsense? You mean not in a church? Not in a church. Well, what about all your relations and all your friends? I had that kind of wedding before. Well, do whatever you like. Oh, won't it be fun? Well, who'd have thought it? I suppose I have to hand it to you for a double-time worker. Still waters certainly run deep in your case. How did you manage it? Lucky for you I had influenza. Now I know how you spent your days. Tennis lessons my eye. You might have told me. Yes, I'm sorry. And now he says he wants to marry you as soon as possible. Lucky again. And lucky you have no family to ask awkward questions. Lucky you. Oh, well, it's nothing to do with me anymore. No. I just wonder what his friends will think. 
Oh, well, I guess that's his problem. I suppose you realize he's years older than you. Well, he's only 42 and I'm old for my age. <laughs> you certainly are. Tell me, my dear, have you been doing anything you shouldn't? I don't know what you mean. Oh, well, never mind. I always said that English girls were dark horses for all their hockey-playing attitudes. Your beau didn't even ask me to the wedding. Well, I don't think he wants anyone. Just the two of us, no guests, and you'll have sailed by then. I just hope you know what you're doing. He's a difficult man, they say, and you'll have to adapt yourself to his ways. You'll have your work cut out as mistress of Manderley, and frankly, my dear, I can't see you doing it. You haven't got the experience. You don't know that milieu. Why, you can scarcely string two sentences together at my bridge tees. What are you going to say to all his friends? The Manderley parties were famous when she was alive. What parties? Hasn't he told you about them? I wonder why not. Naturally, I hope you'll be happy. And I grant you he's a very attractive creature. But I'm just so afraid you're making a very big mistake. And one that you'll regret bitterly. You know why he's marrying you, don't you? He wants company, that's all. Don't flatter yourself he's in love with you. That great empty place just gets on his nerves. He wants company. Simple, undemanding company. That's why he chose you, my dear. those shops that sell everything, you know. Just by the counter, there were some postcard photographs. Well, not very good ones, the colours were all wrong. But one of them was so breathtaking. It was the most breathtaking place I'd ever seen. It was a country house, surrounded by trees with green lawns stretching down to the sea. Instead of buying sweets, I bought that postcard. It cost half my weekly pocket money. I asked the old shop lady what the picture was meant to be. Why? That's Mandalay, she said. You're Mandalay. feeling? Nervous. Don't be. We're almost there now. I expect you want your tea. Why don't you take off that Macintosh? It hasn't rained at all down here. And put that little fur thing straight. What lamb? I bustled you down here so fast. We should have stopped in London and got you some clothes. It doesn't matter to me, as long as you don't mind. Most women think of nothing but clothes. I hope I won't let you down too badly. Let me down, Arno. Oh, you let me down. I'm so ignorant about things. What things? Well, dinner parties, entertaining, things like that. I don't know what to say, what to do, what spoons and forks to use, what, what to order, what to prepare. I won't know anything. You just be yourself and everyone will adore you. You see those trees?